in late January, the there was a, a large spill, 5.3 uh, million liters of industrial wastewater at Imperial Oil's Curl Oil Sands plant. Now, before that, in uh, I believe it was May 2022, there had also been a leak uh, uh, of seepage water, but nobody bothered to tell anyone about the leak from the seepage water. Didn't tell the many First Nations and Métis communities that live in the area, uh, nor did it tell the Northwest Territories government with which, with which it has a trans-border water agreement. So I'm gonna to talk to Shane Thompson, the Minister of Environment and Natural Resources for the Government of Northwest Territories about that. Welcome to the interview, Shane. Uh, thank you. I got a new title. It's Minister for Environment and Climate Change. We've melganated two departments just recently. Excellent. Well, we'll make sure to have that on your bumper. Now, um, no, Shane, you. when I, I saw some media reports uh, immediately after the curl story broke, you weren't a very happy camper. It sounded like not only uh, you hadn't been notified about this one, but this is not the first time. Uh, no, like... I guess it'd be really frustrating. We like you talked about. We have a transboundary agreement with the province of Alberta, um, and so we had to find out via um, our staff that have uh, um, connections in northern Alberta with family, and we were getting this information. So yeah, to say I was upset would be an understatement. Well, no doubt. And so what is the proper, like, what did you expect to happen? What's the, the process that's set out in the Alberta, Northwest Territories, Mackenzie River Basin Bilateral Water Management Agreement was signed in 2015? What's the process that should have happened? So, so what should have happened is they should have been reaching out to us, telling us what was going on so that we were prepared. So then we can then pass that information on to our Indigenous uh, governments as well as uh, the residents of the Northwest Territory. So we're aware of it. This did not happen. It did not happen at all. Right. And the agreement says very specifically that the that their notification is supposed to be given if there are any incidents or area of cons uh, areas of concern, right? It actually says could. So yeah, so when it says could, and, and I stress this, it's not Alberta to make that decision. They should be giving us the information and then we should be making a decision if that has, if it's relevant to us. So if at the end of the day, it's it says could, the wording is very, is could, but they need to give that information to us. Okay, so your expectation is if there's any water, any serious chemicals, anything that goes into the Athabasca River, which the Northwest Territories is downstream of, you want to know about it. Correct. Now, uh, what has happened in the past? This, if this isn't the first time, how often has it happened since 2015? That I would, you'd have to reach out to the department. I don't know how many times this has happened. Um, what we've had previously, probably up to a year ago, they would be giving us information on a regular basis. So if it happened, we were informed. And within the last year plus, it has not been happening. And this is what has caused the problem. Now, you met um, uh, today with uh, the Alberta Environment Minister, Sonia Savage. And did she give you any explanation for why over the past year or so, that communications from the regulator in Alberta just dried up. Um, yeah, there was there were some challenges. Uh, that she explained it um, um, as she could, and we were not happy with what the information was shared with us. But um, you know, uh, these things happen, and so um, at the end of the day, it was how can we move forward and how can we fix this problem? And we were able to get four good commitments from Minister Savage and the department. And um, I was very happy with those four commitments. Can you tell us what the four commitments were? I'm more than happy to tell you that. So um, Alberta agrees to notify us uh, on these spills as soon as Alberta is aware of the spill. So that there is first and foremost. Um, the second part, the agreement between Alberta and then WT to discuss improvement on communication and notification at the new ECC, Alberta NWT Notification Oil Sands Working Group. Um, Alberta and NWT support of, of the inclusion of a, a 
PMC Indigenous Representative on the ECC Alberta and NWT Notification Oil Sands Working Group and Alberta agreed to brief GNWT on the Knowledge Gap Report. So that's what the meeting was originally about was to be because there's this report there's five uh there's six um pillars that we're working on they've given us the information on five there's some gaps and that's why we were going to meet with them but then suncor had and that would took a good chunk of our meeting right and so we should point out to to uh, viewers that uh, a couple of days ago the 5.9 million liters of water was released from uh, the Suncor, uh, one of the Suncor sites into the Athabasca River, and it ha had total suspended solids that were more than double the allowable limit. So that was the issue there. So what kind of information can you share with us about that incident, uh, uh, Shane? So we were told by uh, the Global Mail reached out to us to talk to us about it. Said, were you informed? Um, no, we were not formed, informed about it. Um, so we then reached out to the Alberta government to have that conversation, um, added that to our agenda. Um, as our staff are working on with the Alberta staff on it right now. Um, so we're working on that. Um, we do have uh, monitoring systems out there already from the last um, hiccup that we've seen there. Um, so, you know, the curl uh, leakage and the spillage, we've had our monitoring there. So that there will still continue, but, you know, um, there'll be a, we're up in breakup season now, so there'll be a little bit of lag um, there, but then we'll be out there monitoring after the ice is gone. I have, with the monitoring system that was put in place uh, after the curl incident, Shane, uh, has, uh, has the monitoring detected any, um, you know, unusual amounts of, of chemicals that might have come from curl? We're very fortunate right now. Um, the information that we've received, that there has been no traces there. Um, but in saying that, that's wintertime. Um, we're still got spring runoff, um, and now we have this situation. So again, we are monitoring it. We are like, we've worked with the, the town of Fort Smith. We've also set up, uh, some other monitoring there as well. Um, but also, uh, Fort Chip has their monitoring and we get access to that information as well. So your concern over the spring runoff is that chemicals that might have, have leaked, but then got trapped in snow and ice and didn't get into the river but when the when the breakup comes when melt comes then then uh, that might happen that might happen it may not but it might and again i'd rather err on caution and make sure we do the testing and make sure that you know if it's not there we tell uh, residents then we've been able to do that through whether it's media interviews or it's been questions on the floor that the results presently we have not seen um, any of those uh, byproducts in our water. Now, uh, I've had the opportunity to uh, interview a number of uh, scientists who have been involved in this industry for decades. And one of the issues that they raised is that it's not clear that the Alberta Energy Regulator, the company or whoever they're bringing in, have got the kind of scientific background they, that they they have the scientists with the experience and the expertise to actually do the proper interpretation of whatever data they, they collect. Has that come up at all in any of your discussions, uh, either internally within your government or with the Alberta government? So what I can tell you is um, we have some amazing scientists and staff on our end. So when we get the data, we uh, comb through it. They they look at it. Um, and again, like we said, there's some gaps right now on the information we're getting. So we're asking the questions on that. Um, so we, um, as soon as we get the reports, we look at it. And if we have questions, we follow up on them. So <clears throat> our staff are contacting and working with them if not uh daily uh you know weekly for sure um but you know as soon as data is given to us we analyze it and then if we have questions or concerns we bring forth on that now we've had a, a curl uh, sorry uh oil sand sites have had a, a big spill uh in late january now we've got a big release here just uh in in mid-april uh are you worried that the, we're seeing a bit of a trend? 
Well, I don't know if it's a trend. Um, accidents do happen, um, but I know the curl one. Um, Esso says they're going to fix that problem um, in in May. It's going to be addressed. Uh, what I can say is that um, Minister Savage and the Alberta government and the federal government um, are listening to us and working with us. And again, uh, we're established. They're establishing this new notification and monitoring working group. So um, we are working on those and, and accidents do happen. And I see it in our industry here um, with pipelines and stuff like that. Um, but again, it's now too, you know, but mind you, the first one, you know, was the year before. And um, so again, it's, it is a concern for me. It, it, it is a concern and, you know, that's why we need to fix these things moving forward. Now, the federal government had, well, in fact, uh, Chief Alan Adam uh, of the uh, Athabascan, uh, Athabascan Chippewan First Nation uh, was said in front of the House of Commons. He, he asked the federal government to take over regulation uh, from Alberta because they didn't trust them anymore. The, the this, uh, trust between with the Alberta Energy Regular had, had been broken. And the, certainly the federal government has stepped up. There's now the, the monitoring group that, uh, the working group that the federal government is playing a role in. And are you confident that, you know, the working group and other changes that might be coming will address the kind of concerns that you have? I believe so. I honestly do. I mean, you got to be, um, we brought our concerns forward. Minister Gibo, you know, talked about establishing new, uh, a new, new new notification and monitoring working group but minister savage is working with minister gibo on that they've included us on it um there's indigenous representation on there um they committed um alberta agrees with us just to get uh, nwt um bmc indigenous uh, representative on there um so we see this as a positive step this is something new uh, i think this will make up improve the way things are done for sure uh, a final question uh, shane and i i this may not be uh well i'll ask the question and, and you can tell me whether you can give me an answer or not but i had a former aer uh employee say that this seems to go in cycles you know for a while that the, the 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 AER the regulator gets a little lax and and uh, and and too attuned to the interests of the industry and then incidents happen and then governments get involved and they kind of get them you know they, they improve the process and it's okay for a little while and then you see it uh, you know it, it gets worse again it, it kind of goes in 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 waves it is is maybe the fact that the federal government and, and the Alberta government are now more actively involved uh, is getting the AER's attention and and maybe we'll see more of the processes followed properly and the regulation, the regulator a little more, you know, well, following the rules that they, they've set out. Yeah, I mean, I can't talk about Alberta's regulatory process, but what I can talk about is that the federal government, the Alberta government, um, has agreed that the NWT needs to be part of this. Um, this a process, I think this new notification and monitoring working group is going to be an improvement. Um, and, you know, that there to me, I'm hoping we no, never have to have to go through this again. But, you know, if uh, uh, an accident does happen, at least we have a system in place that will make sure we're, we're aware of it and move forward on it. Great. Shane, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much, Markham.